Today we're going to be talking about the newly released Mizuno Wave Inspire 17. Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. My name is John and this is Motivation Theory Running. And today, like I said, we are here to talk about the brand new Mizuno Wave Inspire 17. This is a series that is near and dear to my heart. I have run in this series since the eight and uh, every year they seem to improve it in a way that makes it completely new, but they don't take away what's good about the shoe. And that's what I love so much about this series. And just to give you a little bit of context, Currently, I'm running in the Wave Inspire 16, the Wave Rider 24, the Wave Horizon 4, and the Wave Sky 4. Those are all the shoes I'm running in right now to include the Wave Inspire 17. So I am very familiar with the feel and performance of each one of these shoes. Uh, so if you want to, you can go find the shoe reviews on my channel, or you can just ask the question down below in the comments of this video. Also, please remember to subscribe so you get notifications each and every time I release new content. All right, so let's go over some of the current stats of the Mizuno Wave Inspire 17. The stack height in the Mizuno Wave Inspire 17 for both men and women is 31 mil in the back, 19 in the front for a drop of 12 millimeter, and that is pretty consistent across most of their shoes. The weight of the men's shoe is 10.9 ounces and 9.2 ounces for the women's shoe. And one thing that Mizuno does really well is they offer a variety of widths. So you can get a wide version in the men's and the women's shoe if you, if you need that extra room in the forefoot. Some people do need it, especially if you're running ultra marathons, you want to have a little bit more room in the front for your foot to swell. I have, I wear 11 and a half. Uh, I find these shoes to be wide enough. My shoe, my, the sides of my feet touch each side. So I have plenty of room. I don't have a small foot, but uh, I don't know if I have a extraordinarily wide foot, but if you do, uh, please look into getting the wide versions of this shoe. So let's take a look at what is new in the wave inspire 17, most notably, it is an upgrade, an upgrade using their new material called the Mizuno Energy Foam in the heel wedge. It's the same material that they're using in the Rider 24, which is the neutral version, at least in my opinion, is the neutral version of the Wave Inspire series. So if you need a, a, a neutral shoe, I run in all of neutral and support. This is a great shoe. Uh, so if you're somebody who likes what the Mizuno Inspire series has to offer, but you run in a neutral shoe and you don't need all that support, look into the Wave Rider 24 and I think you will be quite happy. Some of the other updates include a TPU fan-shaped wave plate. Uh, as you can see here, they've changed the, the shape of it a little bit over the 16. And they say that helps give you a little bit more softness on that uh, ride you have in the shoe. They are now using a engineered lightweight, I think it's called a air uh, mesh that they're calling this new material. I love it, it's very breathable. Uh, the shoe kept my feet warm and running in these super cold temperatures out right now, but it's actually a very breathable shoe and I love what they've done with this. It's got a nice clean look to it. Uh, I just really love the upgrade to the upper in this shoe. And, you know, every year they change just enough to make it a great shoe. They don't change what is good and they just keep adding and doing a better job each iteration of this shoe. And one of the other noticeable changes they've done across most of their other shoes is they moved away from that kind of separation in the outsole there. And they now have more ground contact here on this shoe. As you can see, uh, a little bit deeper of a cutout there. As you can see on the shoe, it's filled in there. It's not as deep and uh, across the heel. And uh, it's the same thing. I think it makes it a little bit lighter. Same thing they're doing in the Rider 24. Very similar to the uh, Horizon 4, as you can see. And the Sky, four also has the same design so it looks like they're finally updating the inspire series to kind of match what they're doing in a lot of these other series i love the, the full ground contact i love what they're doing there and i like to see them innovating mizuno is also continuing the option for the WaveNet technology uh, in this wave inspire series along with the engineered air mesh that i was talking about uh, i have the air mesh version of this and i love it and i love i actually really do love all of the wave knit versions that I have of uh, Mizuno shoes. They are all fantastic. I really love what they're doing with these uppers. Mizuno also says they emboss the center of the wave knit pattern to uh, to help create a fit and hold specific to the, uh, the, the wear to help hold the support of the upper, which is fantastic. So it doesn't just completely collapse in on itself and become a mush of an upper. And that will help uh, create a nice snug 
comfortable fit for each wear based on their foot type. Mizuno also adjusted the women's width, adding two millimeter in the ball of the foot and six millimeter in the upper to provide an industry standard width that is an improvement over the Wave Inspire 16. So who is the Wave Inspire 17 for? Well, obviously this is a support shoe. It adds medial support for those of you who uh, over pronate somewhat or have you know, lower arches that need that support or they're just for people who like to have that extra cushioning that support on the medial side, which I like. I don't necessarily need it, but I actually like to have that support, especially in ultras when I probably start to break down a little bit. The shoe will provide me that support on that medial side to keep my knees from rolling in too much and it seems to work very well for me. So if you are someone who feels you need the support, you're an over pronator, or if you're just somebody who wants to have that extra support, please look into the shoe. It is a fantastic shoe. It is my go-to shoe. It is my workhorse. Uh, and I think that it will work very well for some of you who are looking for that extra support. So currently as I'm shooting this video, I have 105 miles on the Mizuno Wave Inspire 17. My longest run is 24 miles. Uh, what I can tell you is this shoe has performed phenomenally for me. I have not had any issues. There was really no break-in period. The inside of the shoe felt a little flat, so it took a couple runs to kind of form to the bottom of my foot, but I didn't ever feel any hot spots or anything rubbing or having trouble uh, dialing in the lacing. None of that stuff that happens typically when you get a new shoe. Uh, I've never really had that issue with any of the Mizuno shoes and any of the lines that they have. Uh, this shoe really feels like home to me. It's probably because I've been running for so long at the Inspire series, but I think they do a really good job of uh, putting together a shoe that breaks in pretty quickly. It's not a long break in period and does a, uh, does a really good job of forming to your foot pretty quickly to make it nice and comfortable. The feel of this upper was great. It was supportive uh, with a bit of stretch, but not too loose. It doesn't feel sloppy or too loose, which I, I don't like when the shoe starts to kind of collapse in on itself. It, it has a lot of support to it. Uh, that's fantastic that they're able to do that even with this new aero mesh that's really breathable. Uh, the support and the overlays and things they've done with the tech here is phenomenal in keeping this shoe uh, to hold its form. So Mizuno did a great job in fixing some of the issues that I had with the Inspire 16. Uh, most notably, the tongue would fold over and I had a couple versions of this shoe, the wave knit and the normal engineered mesh. Uh, it did the same thing on both shoes. I'm not sure why it was happening, but the, the edge of the tongue was folding under it. Something I had to keep correcting. That does not happen in this shoe. The, the tongue seems to be uh, holding together well. Uh, what I would really like to see Mizuno do is move towards having the gusseted tongue like in the, the Wave Sky 4 and the Horizon 4. They have a gusseted tongue. Uh, there's a nice thin tongue in the Sky, the Sky 4, which I absolutely love. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but that's a very thin tongue on there. A little bit of a th thicker tongue in comparison to that one, but I would love to see them move towards a gusseted tongue. I just like the feel. Now, this shoe doesn't have any issues with the tongue sliding to one side or the other. I really like the feel of the thinner tongue with the gusseted sides. It just gives you that little bit more of a booty feel in the shoe. I, I love that feel. Um, not that this, this feels bad at all, but I think it would be a, an outstanding addition to the Wave Inspire series. So if you're listening, Mizuno, I would love to see that thinner tongue, the thinner tongue with the gusset aside, just like in the Wave Sky 4. If you could make that happen, this shoe would be perfect. Other than that, some of the changes I saw in this shoe over the 16 and some of the other versions is they have a lot thinner of a shoelace. And I didn't like it at first because they're super long, but when I go back and look at the uh, 20, the Rider 24, the laces were short after doing the runner's knot on it. You don't have that 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 problem in this shoe. You're able to actually even do the runner's knot and have plenty of lace to still continue to tie it up without having a little itty bitty tiny knot that comes undone. So well done. They thought that out. It was a little bit strange at the beginning how thin and small these laces seemed versed. Uh, some of the previous versions of the shoe. So lastly, what I want to talk a little bit about is the durability of the Mizuno shoe as a brand. They do a really good job of making a very durable shoe that holds up. The upper, I never have an issue with. The outsole, never prematurely wear out. The shoes don't fall apart. You can get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles out of these shoes. And as a daily trainer, that is phenomenal because you don't want to be spending tons and tons of money just replacing your daily trainers all the time. This shoe, 
If you're a 5K, 10K person, you're probably not gonna want the shoe as your racer. Not that it can't do it, but you probably wanna get a shoe that's a lot more responsive and more of a faster feeling shoe. This shoe I see as a perfect money saver. Uh, I can buy a pair of, 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 of Mizuno shoes and put 400 miles on them. I'm six foot, 208 pounds. That's, that says a lot about the durability of the shoe. Nothing will fall apart. Once these shoes are no longer good for uh, running in, they become my daily walk around shoes because the uppers look so good in them. I mean, this shoe has a couple hundred miles on it. The Sky looks fine. The Horizon 4 looks fine. That says a lot about the company and what they do with their materials. They put a lot of time in putting something that's durable together. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money on a shoe that you will be able to put three, four, 500 miles in, depending on how you run, again, we're all different, depending on how you run, the Mizuno Wave Inspire series, especially the 17, great shoe, or any one of their series, depending on what you need versus a neutral versus a support shoe, you can look into Mizuno. Go out, try the shoe out, let me know what you think, and if you have any questions about uh, any of the Mizuno line here, but even especially the Mizuno 17, if you're looking and getting into this shoe in 2021, let me know down in the comments below. I will leave the playlist for all of Mizuno's shoes, all the reviews I've done on these, all of these shoes right here. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do so. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.